the um, uh, April Public Works to meeting to order, um, but I'd like to first start with a moment of silence in memory of Nate Knox, who was recently passed. Thank you very much. I'm sure Dean's family is, is going to be missing him, but uh, we're all going to miss him around here too. He's been a, a fixture of Columbia County for uh, many more years than most of us have been around, but we'll do the best we can. Um, up first, we have solid waste. Okay. Uh, you have a copy of the station report projects that we're working on. Uh, the bid for next year's household hazardous waste collection event is out. Um, we are tentatively scheduling that for collection for Saturday, May 7th, uh, 2022. It's going to be at the highway garage. Uh, we will also be going out to bid uh, for leachate removal at the county landfills, Clawbrick, Ankrum, and Hillsdale. Uh, we have a number of town and village cleanup events scheduled. Uh, Copiate had theirs April 17th. Stuyvesant's will be May 1st. The village of Chatham is May 10th and 12th. New Lebanon is scheduled for September 18th. Um, if there are any other towns or villages that are interested, uh, please contact our office as soon as you can to get scheduled. Uh, we have limited containers, um, so therefore uh, we'd like to get you booked as soon as we can. Landfill maintenance, uh, in the next week or two, we're going to start sending a small crew out to do some maintenance on our landfills. Um, we got some inspection reports for some tree debris and uh, other minor issues. And that's all I have for this month. Any questions? Did the price of the tires go up much? Um, I'm just inquisitive. Uh, they have not had a price increase uh, this year. Um, usually I call in July when we're getting ready to do um, our our you know, our budgets, right. um, but what they have not had it. What are you charging uh, for uh, We charge from $4 to $10, depending on the size. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yep. Jolene, thanks for helping us out out here in Copake. The Copake Grange uh, did a good job of cleaning up, and we appreciate you sending out that dumpster. That was great. No problem. What do you send hey, out, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, what was that? Uh, do you just send out a single dumpster for you know general purpose trash, or is it specific? Or um, usually, it depends on what type of collection uh, that's going to be held. If it's going to be a townwide collection, uh, we determine how many dumpsters are needed. Um, in Copiate's case, they had a specific group that was doing a collection, and we just sent out a small ten yarder. All right, thank you. But Denal, like the town in New Lebanon, we do a townwide cleanup day and we have a tire dumpster. We have, you know, all different scrap metal. We have all different types of dumpsters. Right. Yeah, this, uh, what we did was the Copate Grange sponsored this. Now, later on in May, we have a cleanup day where people can take uh, items to the highway garage. But, and then we have collect all kinds of stuff. But this was just for individuals from Copate who are members of the Grange to go out and pick up stuff along the highways. It was really well done. Jolene, I have a question. This is Tistria with New Lebanon. Um, yep. Does it cost anything for the county to dispose of electronics? I know Steve Powers, our Climate Smart Chair, has been in touch with you. We're thinking of doing an electronics collection day here in New Lebanon, mm -hmm. and then we drive it out in trucks to you. And my understanding right. is that the county takes it for free, but there's no cost to the county for that to dispose of the electronics? Uh, the only cost to us is for packaging material and labor. Uh, there's a certain protocol that we have to meet to be able to stack um, certain items a certain way and box them. Um, but as for actual disposal or recycling cost, uh, there is not one. Okay, it's awesome. It's just well, labor you, intensive. Yeah. If you need any help, it would be great for New Lebanon to be able to do that because we're so far away from you to have people recycle their electronics directly with you. And even if it means you need our volunteer labor to come out and help box it up, we're happy to do that too. So hopefully we can work something out there. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Jolene? 
And we'll say the town of Stuyvesant will have um, a town-wide crash day this uh, coming weekend, and that's always a popular event here in Stuyvesant. We go through a number of containers and as well as, you know, metal containers and different uh, sorting out. We have all the highway department guys work that crew, and uh, it's a very popular event, but it's very expensive. So. But we thank Jolene for, for helping it. All right, up next we have Highway. All right, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're um, a little far, you are a little far away, Tony. Uh, I don't want to get closer to the mic here, so. Sorry. Hold on a minute, let me try and scoot this forward. If the whole thing falls over and you lose me, that's why. How's that, better? A little better? A little better. All right. That's fine. <laughs> all right. Um, our usual, uh, our usual work, uh, unfortunately, we're still doing snow and ice control operations up until last week. Um, we did begin sweeping county roadways, performing our right-of-way cleanup on all our county roads. And we've started preparing our summer construction season, uh, schedule for a construction season. Um, washing bridges, our usual spring work. Personnel update. Uh, <clears throat> one motor equipment operator out on extended sick leave. And my last communication was him. It looked like he was not going to be coming back. His doctors are kind of forcing him to, to retire. Um, I got two motor equipment operators out on workman's comp. Uh, one motor equipment operator going out on a, a leave of absence and two motor equipment operators resigning. One is moving out of the area and the other took a job with the town highway department for much more money. Uh, and I have one senior motor equipment operator who is going to be retiring in the beginning of May. Uh, as you can see down low, with, with, with the current openings, uh, as well as the upcoming openings, even after uh, the two that are coming to committee tonight, uh, it's going to leave me uh, short eight funded positions uh, for the upcoming season, which has proven to be quite a challenge as we're putting together our, our schedule. Um, because you got to remember, we're adding that to the, the 10 positions that we already unfunded over the last two years with the lack of uh, the, the state ones. So, and uh, this isn't me complaining. And I know we talked a lot about it last week, but I'm just kind of trying to tell you where we're at. Some stuff has changed since our last one, our, our last meeting. Um, like I said, we're putting together our crews for the 2021 summer season. Uh, we're having difficulty uh, staffing a lot of the outposts. Um, so what that will result in, at least for the time being, until we can get some of these positions filled, uh, a reduction in roadside mowing, blacktop patching, and, and some of the, the assistance to the towns and villages that we do, like the uh, um, street sweeping, uh, shoulder machine operations, and material screening. <clears throat> we're currently, I believe we're currently doing some uh, street sweepings for Chatham, Village of Chatham, to, so they were able to get in there. Um, Again, this is just kind of so you, you realize when complaints do come in that it may be a little bit of a delay in terms of getting to some of these things and getting them taken care of. And the phone won't stop ringing. <clears throat> um, again, complaints such as potholes, tree issues, sight distance to the high grass and brush and, and the various other complaints that come in on a, a daily basis. Uh, we also currently have no personnel to sandblast and paint plows um, as well as no personnel to mow outposts and transfer stations. Um, for those of you that are unaware, uh, generally every year, um, one guy from highway, one guy from solid waste, uh, they team up, they go around, they mow all the transfer stations, and they mow all the outposts. I do not have a guy to spare for that this year. Um, we do have mowers at some of our outposts uh, where they would probably be able to do it, come back early at the end of the day, one guy can mow the lawns. Uh, but as far as the transfer stations, as of right now, I don't have anybody to put um, in solid ways. So that's kind of where we're at with positions. Um, new business. Um, on, on Friday, April 19th, uh, one of our pickup trucks caught fire next to the fuel shed in Copig Outpost. Um, and it, it really caught fire, believe me. Uh, 2014 F-250 was destroyed along with its contents and the fuel shed suffered some heat damage. Uh, there were no injuries to any, any employees. Uh, the truck was a spare being used by the foreman while this truck was getting worked on. The vehicle, was getting, the vehicle that was getting worked on was one of the trucks that was due for replacement last year that was put off due to COVID. 
Um, the truck that burned was actually pulled off the auction line last year um, because of COVID and had a new transmission put in it so we could make it last for another couple of years. And of course, that's the one that burned up at the fuel island the other day. So. Do we have insurance coverage on that? Andy? Yes, we do. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's all covered, so it's not like it's a total loss. Um, mm-hmm. You might end up making <laughs> more money on insurance than the truck was worth or that we would have got. Well, from- was that Let me jump in here gas? now. It's a gas. Let me jump in, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. We already got the notice from our insurance carrier that they're going to total it. Um, and they're only total it for 13000 And we're disputing that because going to Enterprise and, and seeing what the value of a, the truck was for that year, we're coming up with around $20,000, Jim. So yeah. we're disputing what the insurance company is offering or total on that. So we'll, we'll keep you update where we are with that. The other thing is, is you guys put a transmission in that. So that needs to be included into the overall cost, Ron. If they know that it just had a brand new transmission, sometimes they'll <coughs> increase the amount of money they're giving you, you know? Yeah, we, we know that. Uh, you know, I got Casey on that. He's pretty good at doing that. All right, good. Thank you. So um, I'm glad we're talking about this because as it turned out, that particular, I guess it was a Friday, I was out on my bicycle and I'm coming along, you know, near the highway, uh, you know, the highway department. And I see all the guys standing on the road, looking back at the highway department. I said, what is going on? And they're looking up and, and then I go by and it was just, something was on fire. It was like quite dramatic. (laughs) <laughs> so I wonder, I'm glad you filled me in, but, but what, what caused that go, to go on fire? It was next to the fuel pump. Is that what it was? Yeah, it, it was next to the fuel island. Uh, they weren't able to narrow it down to a specific cause, um, but they narrowed it down to a location. It was somewhere in the engine compartment, they believe, uh, in the area of like the, uh, the, front, uh, the front wheel, somewhere in that area, um, not too far from where the, the brake cylinder is. And uh, so, but. It burned so extensively, um, they weren't really able to narrow it down. But it was definitely from under the engine compartment. They, they've had trouble with those with that feed wire going to the starter sometimes. Oh, that back were... wire will, will give you trouble and, and cause, yeah. you know, failure. What about the um, damage that was done to the fuel pumps and all that, or, or whatever, that there, island? There was, there was no damage to the fuel pumps. Um, there was some damage to the sheet metal uh, shed and the island. Um, which thankfully it was sheet metal, which they're required to be. Otherwise, I mean, just just behind um, the sheet metal where the where the truck was burning was the, the fuel tank, the gasoline tank wow. above ground, and to the other side was the above ground diesel tank. So um, the sheet metal fuel shed did its job. Um, they did they did put four extinguishers on it. In fact, when I heard the call go out, uh, I immediately tried to call the foreman because it could have been our truck, it could have been a sheriff's vehicle, or you know, they all fuel up there as well. Um, he called me back immediately on the phone <laughs> in a panic saying they put four extinguishers on and it won't go out. So they were just backing away at that point. You know, the fire department was already in route. Was there enough damage to, to put the the um, work, you know, the island work that you had to do with a fuel pumps are on the insurance also, or that wasn't that bad? Um, Ron, do you know if um, if that was included in the uh, the damage? No, it wasn't. It was just the cost of the deal. Yeah, and like I said, it's all it's all surface. They tried to clean it off. Um, really, what it is now is just it's just kind of blackened a little bit. Um, it's just colored. Just, yeah, just discolored. Something we can easily replace down the road, but nothing structural, nothing that uh, really affects the fuel line. So, all right. Tony, is there automatic fire suppression at the fuel islands or that one? I. Don't believe, if it does, it's it's inside over the fuel tank, but I don't recall whether or not Copic has it or not. I know Hudson does. Um, but it's, it's been a while. Look, looking, look, from where I was, it didn't look like anything was being suppressed. I mean, it was a, quite a fire. And yeah, then it was an explosion. And, yeah, and it, was, it was outside of the, actually outside of the, the tank area, you know, so... Um, and it just started kind of where it worked its way through the engine compartment, through the passenger compartment, um, and, you know, caught some of the stuff in the back of the truck on fire, chainsaw, um, you know, did a little bit of damage to the sander that was in the back, in the back, but, um, 
pumps. But it really, at that point, hadn't affected the uh, the fuel pumps themselves. So we, we need to make sure that the fuel pump, the sander, all that stuff gets included in yeah. that, into that yeah, insurance system. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I believe they looked at the sander, and I don't think the sander was damaged to the point where it needed to be. Um, but I have to we, out in the office here. We have a long list of everything that was lost because oh, okay. the, foreman, the foreman himself. Yeah, it's all it's all been everything I believe has been submitted to Casey. Um, Bob Wobman in my office who handles the insurance. Yeah. He, he was, uh, I you know I called uh, Peter Finger right from the scene because Bob was off, um, so he was immediately he immediately got that process going, um, and then Bob went from there. With it. The chainsaw got melted up pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the chainsaw took a pretty good, pretty good brunt of it as well, yeah. which I'm surprised, you know, considering that the, the minimal damage to the sander and then the chainsaw. But um, the foreman also, I mean, he lost his everything, his lunchbox, everything was in it, um, all his hard hat, all his safety equipment, his his Yeti mug, which he talks about quite a bit. <laughs> so, um, but like I said, I believe everything's been submitted. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, moving on to uh, number two here. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware the state uh, passed a budget this year. Um, and believe it or not, they increased the amounts for our CHIP funding. Um, the current runs uh, that I received um, show that Columbia County will be receiving 2222639 in CHIPs. Um, which is an increase of $384,997.44 over where it's been for the last several years. Um, $629,000. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, where am I here? The extreme winter recovery. Yeah, extreme winter recovery. I got a whole bunch of numbers here. Three eighty four nine ninety seven forty four in uh, EWR, which is an increase of one thirty four seven forty nine ten over the last several years. And 629-190-18 in Pave, New York, which is an increase of 209-730-06. Um, a total of $3,236,827.27, which is an overall increase of $729,476.60. Um, additionally, uh, we have um, $1,477,362.18 in rollover from last year's chips. Um, if you remember last year, the, the, the state initially cut that funding by 20%. Um, and then in right. March, uh, they restored it back to I think everything but 5%. And then recently they put it right back up to 100%. Um, but out of that, we only spent $867,121.58 last year. So um, the rest of that is rollover as well. That, that um, we are able to use. So we got a lot of money. We got, we got a lot of money. <laughs> um, is is the EWR number really supposed to be the same as the increase? In yeah, you know, I, but I, you know, I saw that. And when I was doing this report, I went back and forth to my board, to the stuff from the state. That's the way it worked out. So, And I think that just threw me again just now. That's why I lost <laughs> my life. Yeah, um, I did see that. And from what I can see, yeah, for some reason, that's how it worked out. It seemed odd to me as well, but. Unless I missed something somewhere. <laughs> Those are the numbers that I have everywhere around the office. Um, any other questions on uh, the CHIPS funding? Well, I think, Tony, we can use some of the CHIPS funding to buy some of your equipment, your trucks yes, and so forth. that's my next, uh, my next <laughs> topic. <laughs> so, um, I like okay, concept, let's get into it. CHIPS <laughs> increased uh, the funding and the rollover. We had the opportunity to purchase some of the vehicles and equipment that we had to cancel and put on hold last year. Um, as well as stuff that we might have considered purchasing this year um, to save on our vehicular equipment line. Um, I attached a list, and it should be um, the next the next slide. Um, well, it's in there somewhere, yeah, the resolution request. Um, of some of the equipment that we had looked to purchase last year um, and some of the stuff that we could purchase this year. I didn't do anything in, in terms of um, a resolutions request yet. I wanted to discuss it and... and Kind of get the committee's um, uh, an idea where the committee stands on some of this. Um, like Ron said, you know we do have a, a lot of money to spend. And right now, I do have probably uh, 
at least three point five million dollars worth of road work, road work that I can do. That I can easily chip up a lot of that money. Um, but you know, with some of the projects we put on hold last year, and some of the projects that we plan on doing this year. So, um, with that in mind, there's some numbers kind of there, and where we have capital purchases, that uh, where that was, that was kind of what we initially planned on purchasing out of this year's vehicular equipment line. Those are the things we put together back um, a few months ago. Um, and then down on the bottom were the things we had kind of looked at purchasing out of the chips line and, and you know, the plow truck, 262,151 for, for a loader and 62 for, for a loader or a roller. So you, you got almost $500,000 worth of equipment right there. Um, if you wanted to purchase not only the truck that we canceled last year, or maybe the one that we would normally purchase um, this year, uh, again, that's stuff we can do. We, you do have that um, that ship's money to play with. It's quite a bit of a cushion there. Um, with that being said, I talked to um, Ron earlier today about uh, um, delivery times because that's something that's something that's always a concern. Um, and uh, as you know, in, in the past, we've ordered trucks in, in February and gotten them in the following budget year. Um, the, the one plow truck that we were looking at last year, actually at that time, had a, believe it or not, a four to six week turnaround for cabin chassis, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, the issue we're running into this year, for that truck alone, it's eight to ten months just for the cabin chassis. Um, the pickup trucks are six to eight months. The loader is uh, one to two months from you know, the order date, and uh, the roller, there's actually a roller in stock. In stock is about a week. Um, then after May 21st, there's price increases on that. Um, I guess that they're, what they're saying, the biggest holdup that almost all of these are, believe it or not, is computer chips. Everything's computerized, and that mm -hmm. seems to be, I mean, I would have thought it would have been the steel, <laughs> but uh, it, they're, they're saying it's computer chips. So... For the most part, outside of the loader and the roller, anything we purchase truck-wise, that's going to take some, some time to come in. Hey, Tony, with the loaders and roller and all that stuff, are you planning on keeping the old loaders, or is this this is evidently not a trade price that I can say what that look like? Um, let me see. Or is it? That, that might, that's probably not, that's just the quote. That's not the trade price. Okay. Is our loader worth keeping, or do we get rid of that thing? Well, I mean, if, if this is the, this is this is the quoted price, uh, you know, last time when we the last loader we bought, we kept that um, we kept our oldest loader and we traded it the one that was actually replacing because the old cat, um, although she's old and, and she still runs pretty well, so that has been our spare loader. Normally, what I do, what I would do when we're going to trade one in, is I would have Dennis, you know, mechanic, to look them both over, similar to like what we did in our waste loader, look them over, see uh, what kind of life expectancy it's still got, and what, what it would make sense, even as a spare or trading it in. Okay. So. Uh, All right. Because we do, uh, in the winter time, we do need a spare loader, and we've actually run into instances where. The spare loader and one of the main loader goes down, and then we kind of scramble to move a grade off somewhere so it can load the cloud trucks. What year is the loader now that you got? Uh, I, no, I don't go crazy. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't have that on yeah, me. We can go over it. I just was wondering. Yep. Yeah, and, and like I said, discussing it, if we were when I was going to do resolution requests, I have all that information. Yeah, that's um, fine. Yeah, and I'm glad we discussed any of it ahead of time, too. We didn't to sit down and, uh, so, Tony, uh, Supervisor or not, and I had a conversation not too long ago today about a couple ways we can go with this. Uh, we cut your budget by 450000 on the equipment line item. And what Ron and I feel is that could be eligible for stimulus money when we get the stimulus money in, when we don't know. Uh, but we do know that if the budget was cut because of COVID in 2020, we would be able to put in for that. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, and yeah, we can put some of it towards chips money too, since we got this extra windfall of chips money. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you got 250,000 left in your O and M budget in the DM fund, mm -hmm. which you can buy your small pickup trucks and so forth with their rollers. And I would suggest doing that. 
So uh, when the time comes, what Supervisor Knott and I would like you to do is I'll work together with you to put a, a financial resolution together and we'll put these scenarios together, okay? Sort of like, okay, we'll, we'll do the CHIPS funding and if stimulus money comes through, uh, we're gonna go that route. So it's, there's a couple of ways we can go with this depending on, on what happens with stimulus money and so forth. How's that sound? That, that sounds good, absolutely. Yep, works for me. And Ron, you wanna say anything else? No, uh, no, I think you covered it. I think that's, I just wanted to uh, share that thought with everybody. Like I said, we don't know about stimulus money yet, but it has been our understanding from words that, uh, you know, we could use uh, it towards capital projects that were in the budget last year, and these certainly were, so. Yeah, they were 450000 we cut out. Yep. So that's a good good chunk of change, Tony. Yep. That'll buy the, the five truck and the loader, and so, uh, which is what we were going to do last year. But, you know, like you say, if not, um, we do have the chips to fall back onto. My question there was, can we get them in time to be able to build chips? Because you have to get them and uh, pay for them before we can submit it to chips. And uh, we need to do that by next February or so. so. And another thing I got to find out, Tony and Ron, is in uh, the H fund, uh, I thought we put a half million dollars in there for paving. And if we cut that out, that would be eligible too. So, so I got to double check on that. And that would be, you know, it goes along with the chips uh, for paving. Yeah. But I'll follow know, up with you on that. Too, and I, I'll let Tony weigh in on this, but we put a half a million dollars in the H fund this year for paving. And with this increased amount in chips and the fact that we were able to roll over, I don't think we're going to need to use that this year. But yeah. That doesn't make it eligible for stimulus, but with less than the money for the eligible for stimulus. Tony, what's the cost of uh, uh, asphalt? Is that holding? Is that holding steady so far? I can tell you. I can tell you in a, in a minute here. Yeah, um, uh, the the roads that we're doing, the the bids that I have um, range from. Depending on where they are, from 68, 30 a ton to 70 to 72, 10 a ton. So that's, that's holding steady. That's not bad. It's holding steady. It's right around where it was last year. Yeah, it's good. But so you want to get them lined up and documented before it goes up. Yeah. Well, they, they, like I said, these I, these are the quotes I just got from Calarosos recently. So yeah, um, they're they're working on the, the quick quotes, the OGS quick quotes for the next properties. Good. So yeah, I would ask Tony to develop a couple uh, financial resolutions for next month's meeting to uh, move ahead with some of these trunk purchases, if everybody agrees. I agree with that. Yeah, just like to just put the numbers over when he gets it prior to the meeting. That's that's all Tony's doing. You know? Is that case loader the best value? What's that? Is that case loader the best value versus its competitors? Um, we found the last few years that it has been. Because I think ours just had a hydraulic pump go at twenty five hundred hours, and it cost ten grand to fix. We've so. had very few problems with ours. And I should knock on wood when I say that, but um, yeah, no, we we've had very few problems with them. But the next ones <laughs> that we're not gonna, you know. Sounds like the biggest problem is getting someone to sit in the seat. <laughs> yeah, that seems that's my biggest problem these days. You're absolutely correct. You are correct. <laughs> a few years ago, they were fighting to get in the seat with the equipment. Uh, what did we buy for uh, solid waste? Did we buy a case or a John Deere? Was that? Uh, we bought a case. Of? A case? Okay. It was, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else on any of that? Nope. Nope. All right. Um, I have uh, four resolution requests. Uh, the first one is uh, authorization, authorization to fill two vacant positions of senior motor equipment operator one and any vacancies created uh, within the highway department at the 2021 grade 13 a base salary of $47,894. Um, salary level contingent on the length of service of the appointee. 
Uh, these positions are vacant due to the retirement of two employees last April and are needed to adequately staff the department. I move that. Second, Collins. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, second one, authorization to fill one vacant position of general foreman in the highway department at the base salary of 74521 contingent on the length of county service of the, of the appointee. Um, at this time, um, we've had discussions about um, not backfilling at the moment. Um, so that would just be filling that position of general foreman, okay. which is a tested civil service position. I'll move it, Kippy. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Number three, authorization to fill one vacant position of skilled laborer two in the highway department machinery fund at the 2021 base salary of 46083 uh, contingent on the length of county service of the appointee. I'll move that. I'll second. I got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And the final one uh, to award the bid for motor oil and lubricants to Palsonello Fuels Incorporated from Collier, New York, who was the lowest overall bidder. I'll move it. Mattler. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's all I have for highway. Thanks, Tony. All right. Tony has been so kind to offer. Tony's been helping uh, Bar Body in, in Dean's office, and uh, he has offered to uh, bring the engineering resolution that uh, Bar put together for us here. Um, everybody's been working hard to try and carry things on over there. So, Tony, go ahead with this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you like to go through the agenda as well? Well, uh, just give us the highlights anyway. I know you don't know everything that uh, Dean knew, but tell us what's going on there a little bit. Yep. Um, the highlights are pretty much the first page. Um, bridges of County Route 25 and the Fitting Creek uh, replacement. Um, almost complete. The project costs of the bridge were reimbursed by a federal funding 80%, funding 50%, and the Columbia County funding 5%. Um County Route 18, which is fishing game. Uh, let's see. Final contract plans for the project are now 98% complete and will be sent to the New York State DOT and Federal Highway Administration uh, within the next few weeks for their final reviews and comments. Um, in the spring of this year, approval advertised. On April 27, GPI submitted an application for member directed projects to Republican Delgado uh, on behalf of the county. Uh, part of a new initiative with bipartisan support in the House of Representatives. GPI estimates that if received, the money could save the county about 80% of the projected overrun costs of this project. Um, county Route 7A, Copay Camel Reconstruction. GPI has completed all the field uh, topographic survey work for the project and is currently progressing. Converting the field survey data to project mapping. Mapping tasks should be completed in early spring at which time preliminary design tasks could then begin. And also an introductory get start meeting was held with the Copet Camlet project um, back in early December. Um, County Route 21, tributary over the Akawama Creek under Bridge, New York, as well as the Valley View, um, Bash Bridge, uh, Brook Bridge and Copet Falls, uh, both progressing as well. Um, Completed in November 2020 and closeout work on the project is progressing. And Valley View Bash Bish design environmental task coordination with the state parks and the overhead utility relocation coordination tasks continue to progress. All design and other required project planning tasks will continue through the spring and summer 2021 and expect to let a construction contract in the fall of 2021. Third round of bridge culvert New York funding application solicitation. Uh, there was two culvert replacement project draft applications submitted on April 13th for the funding under the Bridge New York program, County Route 7 over Punta Creek in the town of Austerlitz and County Route 7 over a tributary to Roloff Johnson Kill in the town of Gallatin. 
uh, Bridge Project candidate draft applications due by May 5th, 2021. Final candidates for the Bridge Project have not been selected by Dean. However, notes indicate that two of the three bridges had in he had in mind for this program had been submitted in the 2018 Bridge New York program. Um, and these two can be updated and submitted in this round. Um, locally funded bridge program. Uh, continuing to review the 2020 inspection reports for the 2021 season maintenance and repair work, um, future capital bridge replacement rehab using local funds and any other available funding sources. Olivelle Bridge, uh, Mellonville Paper Mill Bridge, uh, project closeout continues this spring. West Taconic Bridge, Woodward Bridge design phase, detailed design, utility coordination, right away acquisition, environmental printing tasks for the reconstruction of these two structurally deficient county bridges continued by design engineers, uh, Clark Patterson, Lee of Albany. Uh, I believe all this has been done. Um, 2021 multi-bridge element specific repair improvement contract. Uh, the design agreement for this project has been fully executed. The Bartlett and Judas DPC has now commenced design work and field work for the multi-bridge improvement project. Um, and request for proposals for future bridge designs. Dean was reviewing inspection reports, field observations, and other structural information in order to prepare requests for proposals for design services for several future locally funded county bridge and large culvert replacement and or major rehab projects. Uh, these RPs will likely go out on the street in the first half of 2021. Uh, Dean had not indicated which projects he intended to proceed with, and the decision uh, will need to be made as to how to proceed. County Airport updates. Uh, fuel farm replacement design work continues this winter. Completion expected in the spring with construction bids to be advertised in the spring also. Uh, 2020 FAA grants. 2020 Aviation Capital Grant Application, uh, 2021 FAA Grant Application. I'm just kind of skimming through these, I'm sorry. Um, Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2020. A uh, total of 23,000 federal airport aid has been offered to Columbia County from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2020. Passed by Congress back in late December 2020, these federal funds from this latest, latest federal COVID relief package can be used to cover airport operating expenses, maintenance costs, payroll. Uh, the county must fund those back for these funds no later than June 30th, 2021. Um, CARES Act Airport Operations Maintenance Funding Grant. Uh, maintenance utility and other expenses incurred in 2020 are being tallied for reimbursement under this COVID relief package. This submittal will be less than the $69,000 offered. However, we have time to submit additional expenses towards the total grant allowance. Uh, we have uh, one resolution request. A uh, resolution requested authorizing the chairman of the Columbia County Board of Supervisors to award and bid the contract for the replacement of the West Taconic and Woodward Bridges to the lowest responsible bidder, A. Calarusel and Sons of Hudson, New York in the amount of $1,749,786.25. Uh, this bid was almost $500,000 less than the estimated cost. Uh, so. I'll move that. Second. I've got a motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were correct, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a hand up here. Is that Tistria? We can't tell who it is. This is town supervisor. Is there a question? That, that's me. Sorry. I... Found the time to help uh, the lady on County 9 that had the trees up in her right away, and she wrote me an email just really grateful for all of you so thank you for for taking the time to do that for new lebanon you're welcome i think Tony, i got a question something. Kippy. on the uh, fish and game road are you guys going to be doing any patching on that at all i know they're going to redo yeah. it but i don't think it's going to be this year yeah we we are uh, we held off last year hoping that this year that it was going to get done um but it is it's the first road on the list to, um, yeah we're, so we're got a hell of a bad section there by by yeah. the by the 
the gun club there. there yeah, just, I, you can't miss it because it covers a whole lane. Oh, I know. I've taken several rides across that road. Yeah. To the point where I, I almost called the county highway to complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad. So, All yeah. Right, thank are, you. We're, we're going to patch those spots. Yeah, people were asking me. I said, I'll find yep. out. Thank you. Yep, Tony. absolutely. Uh, right. Is that the one resolution for engineering? Yeah, it's just the one resolution, yeah. We got a motion in a second. Did we approve that one? Jerry, did we do that all? No, you need to you need to get everybody. Take the vote. Yeah. All right. All in favor. All right. All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Wasn't sure there was Thank a question enough, so we held off on that. Right. Five hundred thousand dollars lower, though. That's uh, pretty incredible. Did it, was there? What was the main justification for that decrease? That I do not know. I do not know. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been involved in that with it until recently, <laughs> so I really don't know what the decrease was. Maybe they bring their own materials, but wow. They had competitive bidding, so that was a good thing. And they're local too, which might play into it. It said though um, five hundred thousand less than the estimated cost, so maybe they, maybe Dean and everybody estimated it up five hundred thousand higher. I wonder how close the bids were, you know. Right, right. I can get those from Barnes. She did say they were competitive, but I don't have the numbers in front of me. I wonder if they were five hundred thousand, or is it just what they thought right. it would cost? It's probably below the engineering cost estimates, as you say. You know. Um, that's really it. I mean, other division, uh, engineering division activities, a uh, review of the year 2019 and 2020 by annual and annual bridge inspection reports, um, federal New York state bridge, highway and airport project reimbursements, locally funded bridge, uh, program planning administration, town highway right away investigations, layouts, processing, reduced speed limit requests, various towns, um, Bridge flag report coordination and responses, miscellaneous guide rail drainage and COVID design projects, um, assist in the highway division with review of proposed minor commercial subdivision entrance plans, and assisting with A11 DIG Safe New York excavation underground utility location requests for county DPW infrastructure, and assistance the highway division with several culvert replacements. And that's all I have for engineering. Thank you, Tony, and uh, I'd like to thank Tony and, and the staff for trying to carry on out there. In fact, we do have to say that all of the engineering firms that we deal with, the Sarah that does a lot of airport work and GPI and CPL, all of these firms have been uh, very good in, in helping us through some of these things. As a matter of fact, I, we got an email from uh, one of the fellows at GPI there that applied for some extra money for County Route 18 for us that became available. And, they filled out the forms and got it in for us real quick because it needed to be turned around quickly. So these projects we're trying to carry on with. Yep. And, and, and GPI and Barton and the Judas as well both reached out to me personally. Um, same thing, anything they can help with. Uh, I know um, Rob Spitzer from uh, Barton and the Judas said anything he could do for us. And, uh, he considered Dean a, a close friend. So anything he can do. Not just as Barton and the Judas, but as, as a friend of being. Um, so they, like Ron said, they've all been great. Very good. Okay, if there's no questions there, we'll move on to uh, facilities. Good evening, everybody. Uh, start off, basically, routine maintenance continues at all of our buildings. Um, changing belts, filters, and grease and fittings as needed along with doing all our uh, DEC uh, monthly checks on the fuel islands and uh, the outfalls at the airport. Um, couple uh, just various repairs throughout the county, like uh, repairing a railing, 325, um, working on the uh, hangar doors at the airport. Um, every once in a while, we have to adjust cables and, and uh, change switches in the new uh, T hangers um, out at the nutrition site. Um, we had to repair the outside wall. We were getting water seemed to be from the downspout coming down. Um, so we patched the wall outside 
along with uh, removed all the wet, uh, the water that uh, soaked the wall up inside and replaced it all. And as of yet, it's been all right. Um, we had to replace the roof. There was a little storage building on the back side of that building that was, uh, no one ever used it, but we decided to repair the roof because there was a hole in it. So we repaired it, put a new door on it. We might use that room to store the generator out there um, for when, you know, if we need to um, hook it up in time of a power outage. Um, let's see. Oh, at the airport too, the new crank down beacon has been installed too. That was part of the perimeter uh, fence grant. So that's uh, that was installed last week. So um, that's a good thing. We no longer have to climb up there and work on the motor or the lights. So that's a plus. Um, and I hate to tell you, but uh, we've had four separate times out at the sewer treatment plant. Um, had to pull uh, both pumps on two occasions and then just one pump here or there. Um, so the issue's ongoing. We sent some information to um, county attorney. Um, so uh, next time I told uh, the contractor, get me pictures. I wanna see exactly what's in there. So this way we can, you know, make sure that we know where it's coming from. But they said it's always gloves and those, uh, the rags. So um, that's an ongoing issue. Um, the courthouse, um, an update on that project. Uh, we're kind of moving into phase two and kind of got a little um, more in depth now. Um, they're looking at, you know, basically using this courtroom as like a model for all, all future um, sound upgrades. We're getting a lot of like state-of-the-art equipment in there. So um, we had to figure out how we're going to um, put um, some of the devices, like they're looking at monitors for the jury box, and we had to come up with ways to try to hide the wires. So um, this is turning into more of a project than I thought, but uh, I think at this point, um, we might as well keep going with it. Um, just, uh, you know, if they're going to put all the money into it, we're going we're gonna to help out with it involving painting anything that looks like it needs to be painted. Um, so basically phase two is, um, you know, we had to remove a lot of the electric and data lines there and then have to run new electric and data. Um, we're going to assist the state IT staff, um, installing the track system and, um, they're putting, we're putting cameras on the ledges and, um, some impaired listening devices throughout. So we'll be assisting them with that. Um, once we get the track down, we're going to put plywood down and then eventually uh, carpet. But we're working on the bench area. We're just waiting on uh, the approval of the paint colors right now. Um, and then we can move forward. The problem we're running into is uh, scheduling, uh, trying to work around the court system. Every Wednesday there's grand jury. So we have to clean up on Tuesday and then start back in the afternoon. But they uh, recently had a trial. They were getting ready to you know, pick a jury for in there. So they would use that room for a day or two, but that's been postponed. So um, we're looking at probably, I'm thinking by the end of next week, we may start um, the installation of the, the track system and the, and the flooring, but uh, it all depends on how the, the court system, I'm waiting on a schedule from the chief court clerk over there. She should get it to me by tomorrow, the next day. Um, but that's an update on the, the court project. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it for, for this month. Do you think once we get this new system in this new sewer system that we're still going to have issues with, with this, these, uh, the clogging? I, I think it'll be better according to, I think these pumps are going to be a lot bigger than what's out there. So I imagine they're going to be able to grind that up and uh, push it through. I, I'm hoping. Um, so It's been going on a while over there. It's ridiculous. Too long. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. <laughs> too long. I think we did have a did have Ray Drakowski still on the call because he had given the sewer subcommittee. Is he Ray still there? Or no, I don't see him anymore. Okay. I seen him. He said he left. I mean, I okay. yeah. yeah, it showed it. He left. That's a good question for them. But I, I'll give everybody a quick. You know, we did update the sewer subcommittee and project. That project is moving along on schedule. Uh, Jimmy will be happy to know that the only change order that's been presented for consideration at this point in time is a $9,500 reduction if we change from stainless steel piping to PVC piping. So, okay. Uh, in a certain pump house there, you know. Uh, Unless but, all those latex glugs clog it up. Right, yeah. yeah PVC pipe thing. goes like that. <laughs> right. Um, can't they be fined They for, you know, you know, for doing this? They can't be fined? Hey, it's Rob, the county attorney. I'll just give you an update on it. Um, we had had better compliance from them over a period of time. I don't know if it was COVID related or not, but as Brian said recently, it's become an issue again. We had specced out, it had them spec out a grinder pump that they were going to install that would take care of this issue in the future. DEC stepped in and said, no, that would be part of our collection system and we'd have to maintain it. So we told them that we would need two grinder pumps, one at each of their facilities, the rehabilitation center and the dialysis center. Um, COVID happened. They kind of balked at doing that. We need to take it back up again with DEC. And if there's a problem reoccurring, then we need to set up a meeting. I believe one of the facilities transferred ownership to which complicated things. We couldn't mm -hmm. get a response back from the administration. Both of them had pledged to us in response to letters that we had sent. that They were going to do employee education and try and deal with the problem that way. But if they're not and it's becoming a problem again, then we'll set up a meeting with the two administrators and uh, go back to the grinder pumps and we'll have to be, be, get involved with DEC and, and negotiate with them because we want those systems to be their systems, not part of the county collection system. Right. And then the, the other issue is we'll have to, um, you know, get those approved and get those online. And honestly, Kathy, we need to update and that'll be a next step coming up soon by local law our sewer law and regulations. Mm -hmm. What we have on the books is from the 90s when the Commerce Park was created. And okay. we probably will honestly take your regulations from Greenport so we mirror them so we have the same regulations and adopt them as a local law in the county. There is a okay. plan to do that so we're consistent. And okay. hopefully hopefully with the new system, the upgrades and working with them, we can, we can not have to revisit this problem. I, I just want to throw in there that, you know, years ago, I was the assistant director of nursing out there, and we used to go to a thousand watch clause a week. And education, you know, resident um, staff education is useless. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only way I can put it, because, you know, they, they have their habits and their old habits, and that doesn't change. Well, and as you told me, they have a... Uh... It's not a typical little, like, putting it down a toilet. They have a chute that they can use. They have, which they have a big makes, hopper sink. A big, yep. yeah, big hopper sink. So even if we had to have them uh, take care of that, and I remember when Bob Pinto was our facilities director, he said mm -hmm. he could time the clogs to a certain shift. If he could almost wait in the parking lot and find the nurse that was doing it, <laughs> it, it would help. But, it's true. Uh, it's true. But we're yeah, working on true. it. Hey, Rob, before they hook into the new system, can't we require that they pre-treat? Well, that's the other element is the element of proof. And, and Brian has been good when we had previous problems going back months of having the contractor give me photos. And I won't share that. I won't describe those photos, but it's just a big ball of messy, you know, sewage coated sheets that, you know, proof is somewhat of an issue. I mean, we've got some conclusions that can be drawn of where it's coming from and what's happening. But we also have to rule out anybody else in the Commerce Park. Well, there's only 22 of them. So. Yeah, it's an issue of proof. Can I prove beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal court that they're violating our sewer treatment laws? And, you know, we're trying to fix it through meetings and negotiation with them. And uh, like I said, I had hoped we had had some success, but it keeps coming back. Hey, Rob, I've got a question. Could, could we isolate those two facilities? Like, in other words, before the sewage gets into our system, they can put a pit or something, a collection pit, so nothing uh, that's any bigger than, say, an inch big can get into the sewer line. Is there well, a way another, to make them do that? That's another option that will run past Ray because the cost of two grinder pumps was significant for them. Uh, 
you know, if they can put in a screen system or a grate system that it's their responsibility to clean out and pay for mm -hmm. instead of making it to our pumps, that would be another solution. Right. That's the way I think I would let them do it. That way it's on their, it's on their dollar and it's not on their property. So. Right. Just like restaurants need grease traps. It's one of those types yep. of issues. Yeah. Yep. We did go over some of that stuff. Remember Rob, um, some, some different ways here about a year or two ago. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of not to blame or involve DEC, but that's where it fell apart when they yeah. we, we had an agreement and a plan. And when the plan changed to double the expense and the effort, that's when everybody kind of walked away. I'd be interested to see what Ray's got to say on how our system would even handle this problem now anyway, too. <clears throat> hmm. Well... All right. Well, we'll follow up on that a little bit. Brian, is that all you had for facilities? You didn't have any resolutions? No, not this month. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other update I wanted to give the committee is, is uh, through um, the uh, Space Utilization Committee, uh, we have continued to work with uh, SmartWatt on a Phase 2 of the energy project, but this one involves... Um, trying to do some capital improvements to uh, mainly to 401 State Street. I do have them prepared to come to June's full board. I didn't want to bring them to this committee. I thought this was important enough that we would do it at a full board meeting. Um, so June will uh, look forward to hearing what they've got to say on a larger project that we can consider. Nothing guaranteed. Just consideration at this point in time. Is there anything else to come before the public works tonight? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Right here. Right here. Second. At the elder, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. I see my orange ironing board. Thanks, Mike. You made me happy. Good night, everyone. <laughs>